Hey, and welcome to another episode on our new A-Series, where we deep dive into the specifics of each model in the range and the different applications that the feature set allows for. My name is Jane Arneson, Product Specialist at Atom Audio, and I'm looking forward to showing you what we've come up with. In this video, we're going to explore the age-old topics of speaker placement and equalization. Today, we're using the A7Vs, but the equalization features we'll explore are available on all A-series monitors. The A7V speaker represents the evolution of Atom Audio's award-winning A7X, a classic two-way near-field speaker design with a seven-inch driver. Equipped with a woofer made from multi-layered mineral fibers, our handmade precision XR tweeter, rotatable HPS waveguide and onboard DSP-based equalization options, the A7V will be the sweet spot in our new A-series for many artists, mixers and producers. We'll use this room to showcase the setup of the speakers for two different applications. First, as main monitors in a dedicated studio space. And secondly, as part of a simple editing or production setup in a typical home studio. But before that, let's familiarize ourselves with the tools that we have at hand and take a look at the backplate, which is common to all models in the A-Series. The A-Series capitalizes on the transformative power of DSP-based electronics to provide greater control of the speaker and a constant crossover. This may sound like a given, but crossovers relying on physical capacitors, coils and resistors usually change their response slightly with varying operation temperatures. The room adaptation section of the user interface on the back panel has four independent bands of EQs presenting predefined settings which are designed to address typical acoustic issues. Bass, to compensate for low-end buildup as a result of positioning the speaker close to any boundaries. This is commonly known as speaker boundary interference response, or SBIR. Desk, one of the usual suspects of surfaces that cause early reflections, resulting in coloration or comb filtering of the frequency response. Presence, this one is primarily meant to cater for individual preference. And finally, treble, helpful to compensate for speaker aiming issues. You can simply step through the different boost and cut options of each band using the toggle switch below. The status of each EQ band is indicated by the LEDs. The starting point of every stereo monitoring setup should be a proper stereo triangle, which means that the two speakers and your listening position should form an equilateral triangle. In this room, we want the speakers to sit behind the desk instead of on the desk, but not too far back since the A7Vs are near field monitors. You may want to use a measuring tape to help you get the distance between the speakers and your listening position exactly right. Start with the distance between the speakers and use this as a radius of two imaginary circles with the speakers as their respective center points. The intersection of the two circles is your listening position. Now that the speakers are in the right location, you should also take care of proper speaker orientation. The cabinets should be tucked in horizontally so that they aim at your ears. The acoustic axis of the speakers, either between the tweeter and the woofer or the tweeter and the mid-range driver, should be at ear height or at least tilted towards your ears. And don't shoot above your head or towards your chest. Height adjustable stands or speaker supports can be really useful to achieve optimum position. In some setups, however, the tweeter can't be made to aim towards the ears and you're effectively listening to the speakers off axis. This is where the treble shell filter comes in handy to boost the high frequency range that'd be lacking in the response at the listening position otherwise. Back to our setup though. Now that the speakers are properly positioned, we can have a first listen to reference tracks. We find that in our space, there's too much energy in the low region. We're losing out on some of the definition here and unbalanced monitoring leads to unbalanced mixes. So we quickly move behind the speakers and use the low shelf filter to lower the level of the bass. This has led to the desired improvement in the low end, but now when listening again, we also notice a bit of annoyance in the lower mids. So we get behind the speakers one more time to also cut the frequency response in the desk band by two steps and listen again. In that case, it was too much of an attenuation. So we simply go back to flat or we can decrease the cut with just a few taps of the toggle switch. It goes without saying that for an optimal equalization, most people would need to run proper measurements and find the right room adaptation setting according to the measurement results. The process would be just as easy, but also here it's key to always double check the sound with your own ears. In general, a trained ear with familiar music can take you a long way. So let's move on to a production workstation in a typical home studio. Again, we have to take care of the correct setup. 
In this scenario, we find the A7Bs right on this desk, pretty much backed up against a wall, since we don't have the luxury of space, which is a common problem in home and bedroom studios. As a result of the speakers being in the corner between the wall and table, the energy in the base region will build up significantly causing an over-representation of the low frequencies. On top of it being too loud in the bass and ultimately causing mixes lacking low-end energy, this may also mask a lot of the mid-frequencies. The low shell filter on the back of our A-series monitors is just the right tool to compensate. With the cabinets just sitting on the desk, no pedestals or upwards tilt, the tweeters are not directed at the ears. So the listener will lose out on some high-frequency energy. Boosting presence and treble using the filters on the rear will still help to get a more balanced spectrum. Now we can get to work. So in this video, we've looked at the basics of setting up speakers correctly in a stereo triangle and how you can compensate for acoustic issues in two different environments with a few simple steps. Thanks to the onboard room adaptation capabilities of the A-series monitors. We've used the A7Vs as an example, but as mentioned before, you'll find the same functionality on all of the studio monitors of the A-series. In the long run, we recommend to tackle acoustic issues at their source, the room acoustics and the setup itself. Acoustic treatment is a necessity when it comes to creating professional spaces for mixing and mastering. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Jane Arneson, product specialist at Adam Audio, and I look forward to seeing you in our other A-series videos. As always, please let us know if you have any comments or questions. Tschüss.